What's up internet? This is going to be part two of the Nick's Custom Cycles video. And uh, in this video, Nick's going to show you his entire vintage motorcycle collection. He's got a bunch of crazy wild shit in there and it's going to be super cool. My camera died like halfway through filming, but it was like a really long video anyways. I might do part three, but yeah, here's part two. Check it out. So much. Here's a wicked history. Whew. This is a 1910 Indian. Okay, this one and that one down there are both 1910s. So the old timers then wouldn't sell you too much because they're scared you're going to make bobbers, choppers, cut downs, <laughs> peelers, whatever. You know what I mean? And they mm -hmm. were right. So if you were politically correct, you could borrow an old guy's goodie and then you made a goodie for him, a goodie for you, a goodie for the neighbor, and he got his goodie back and everybody was still good. Okay. Mm. This is a five Indian. Okay. Same thing. I found a motor was pretty reasonable, just a motor, okay, and half a front end. Now was this here is a real Indian front end. You can see the little date codes and patent dates and stuff stamped on that nut there. That's the real deal. Wow. But it was up for a later bike, an eight, like this one here. So underneath that tit is a spring. So we shortened up the tit and made it for a five. So it's a real Indian front end and a real motor. And then the rest got reproduced over the years. In other words, this one here, uh, you know what this is? What's that? What do you think that is? That little thing there. Looks oh, like a uh, fuel cap. Yeah, it is. That's the gas cap, okay? So in 1905, you went to the uh, drugstore and you bought your petrol and a little funnel. You dumped your petrol in there and that gave you gas. And you went back in the drugstore and you bought oil and a little funnel and dumped it in there. And you went back in the drugstore again and you bought in that tube is dry cell batteries like flashlight batteries. So you went from drugstore to drugstore to keep your little motorcycle running in 1905. There was no <laughs> gas stations like you're thinking. Mm. These are like a bicycle. Yeah. You know, they have a coaster brake and you had to give it some assist because it only had about one and a half, one and three quarter horsepower power. You had to give it an assist if you're going up any kind of incline. Plus the throttles are backwards. Harley people and most everybody else is used to a throttle on the right. Well, this had a throttle on the left. Mm. See, it's working a the car there. Mm -hmm. Okay, all linkages and stuff. So that's that. This is a 1908 Indian. That's their first twin cylinder job. Same general idea, just everything's a little bigger. Now, uh, check this out. Look at this tire. Oh gosh. That's on purpose. The reason they did that was they didn't have face shields back then. They had goggles and they were getting whacked with all these stones. So they put bald tires on there so they didn't pick up stones and whack them in the face. Later on, they figured how to use a face shield over your helmet. And they started went going back to knobbies and stuff with tread on it. And they made homemade front ends that had more, more cushion, more suspension to them. And then they started lengthening the frame so you had a longer wheelbase mm -hmm. and then uh, made homemade front ends. It's an Earl style fork, it's all homemade. And then uh, they, on this one here, it's a KR motor cut in half with a 31 transmission, single speed transmission, running dual Delordos and remote float bowls because they ran alcohol instead of gasoline. Okay, you got more get up and go out of it. So this was competitive up into the 60s, but whatever, when the race was over, see the hills, they didn't just go up the hill. They went up the hill and then they had a jump and then it went up the hill again. And these things were wound wide open and they run with a kill button. In other words, you had to push the kill button. And if you didn't do it just right, you either stalled out on the hill or you took and flipped over backwards naturally. So whoever won the race, they always had gray or white hair <laughs> because it was experience level, whether it was Harley, Indian, or, or whoever was on the top. Have you won a lot of races, Nick? Huh? No, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good at it. But you got a bunch of gray and white hair? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the hair, but nothing to do with the racing. Okay, so this is a CAC uh, a 34, and uh, I had we were lucky we had two of them over the years. And uh, uh, Mort Wood was the was upper echelon in the Antique Motorcycle Club. So one time he found this deal, and uh, what it was because if the old race bike wasn't winning a race. 
it was worth less than a street bike. In other words, we could find this stuff, some of it, uh, in, in basket case form at swap meets because if it wasn't winning a race and it turned into a basket, you could you could uh, pick it up for less than a normal bike, okay? Mm. So uh, the chopper builders would end up taking the, some of the racing stuff and putting on their choppers and this and that and whatever. But this one guy, he must have been on top of his game pretty good because he made stuff that they shot in outer space. In other words, he had mm. something to do with, uh, with, with that. So we ended up with these things and uh, this one, the guy restored before we got it. The other one was half a part. That's in the picture. And it's the same, same thing. And they started at 500, meaning the numbers started at 500, not 500 bikes, because there's only about 30 of these total, more or less. This here's a, a race bike, uh, a modern, I'll say a fairly modern race bike. It's a panhead of 103 inches and it's made just for racing straight in the dirt. Got a knobby on the back. And to start it, there's an electric motor that you put on there to get it to spin over because there's just too much compression and too much of everything. So, but they don't do that much of that type of racing anymore. So that they went out of style. But this is a 54 KR. And I got it through Al and that when this stuff wasn't such a big deal. But Al was like a racer from the old days and the real thing, and then he got old and then broke out his race bike and started doing vintage racing and all. So it's a it's a period correct old time 54 KR race bike. And this is an XR 750, I believe it's a 72, yep. And then this one here has a good story. I think this was, they say this is probably one that was uh, run by a guy named Applegate in the Pennsylvania area. That's rumor control, there's no, Nothing to back that up. This one here, this is an XR750 1980, and it was sold White River Junction, Vermont, in the middle of the winter, and it was cold. And me and Benny were up there, and uh, the guy was trying to sell snowmobiles and tractors and motorcycles and everything, and it was cold and miserable. And somebody had ordered this bike up, and this is the way they came, just like this. But then he stuck the dealer with it because it wouldn't fit on his helicopter. So the guy was griping and grumbling and stuff, and he said, hey, "Get that piece of you can have that rich guy problem." So he sold it. He sold it to me for either fifty two hundred or fifty six. I can't remember, but it's a nineteen eighty, and it never got raced. Okay, so this is the way they came. If you ordered a race bike from the factory, they came with no brakes, no extras. That's it. You do your own thing, and and that's the end of that. So actually, we get it home and. All the boys around here, they wanted to tear it all up and then they wait a minute, wait a minute. And that's like, I had to hide it. As soon as they got it running, I know what's coming next. They got no brakes, right? So something's going to get screwed <laughs> up. So anyhow, that's a 1980 alloy motor. This is an alloy motor, same thing. Just close on the year. But this was actually raced. You can see what they did. They took off the magneto, stuck a battery on there, put electronic ignition on there, and started upgrading and upgrading and beating it to death. So... This was actually raced. And there's some old timers. That's a 48, uh, 125 Harley. And uh, that's about a 55, 56. This was raced by a guy. This is a, this is a rare one because it's, it's a XLR. And that means it's 900cc motor. And you could buy this thing as a motor assembly from the factory. They made it from the late 50s on up. And it was 900cc, but the differences were it had special heads where the spark plugs were raised. In other words, they were longer, okay, long reach spark plug. Came with a front mount magneto and had aluminum clutch drum and that front engine sprocket was tapered with a key, okay? So uh, it, it wasn't too popular though because it was 900cc and you could put it in any frame you had. You could stick, stick it in anything, but most of the racing was 750cc or 500cc. In other words, it had limitations on how big. So a lot of this stuff had to race in uh, un hill climbs or unlimited categories or outlaw categories, all right? So this was set up as an outlaw bike, little jack wheel. And this thing was race with your bro, put it against it. The guy that owned it was named Chief. And when you looked at him, you, you realized like, wait, this guy was a real American Indian. He was a real thing. <laughs> So one of his friends got greased and uh, he got gun shy and ended up selling us the bike. He still rides now, but he has a, he's, he's retired now. How cool the checking on the paint is. Yeah. Well, it's about a 69 frame, but the motor itself, 
the motor itself, can you read that? 5859, what's it say here? That engine number. Uh, 59. 59. 50, yeah. 50 R. Okay. So that was sold as a motor assembly and you do what you want with it. Wow. So, all right, Bob Royal built this, okay? Bob Royal worked for the Navy Yard, right? And the bike itself was from Bridgeton, not the sidecar rig or the package van rig, but the bike was from Bridgeton. And uh, what it is is uh, it was inside, the guy passed away, and they put it in the shed. Well, Bob Royal got a hold of it, and it needed paint. And in the 70s and into the, the 60s, the deal was to take it down and make it pretty it up and shine it all up instead of leaving it alone, okay? So, and you couldn't get tires, so you, you modernized the rims to where they had a more modern tire, okay? So he did that, but he was worked at the Navy Yard and he got bored, okay? So he got a hold of this, this sidecar frame and widened it up. He widened the sidecar frame and then he used a picture from the, map, from the old time, there's his picture, right? And he used the tire size and did it and made it up a blueprint. And this is Model A Ford top material. Model A hood hinges, this goes up and down. See here, I'm moving a little bit, I don't want to drop everything. Okay, that's a lid. So he made this whole thing. Now he couldn't find the right fender for the side. So what he did, if you tap on this fender, and then you tap on the front fender, they don't sound the same. Because this one's steel, and this one's fiberglass. So over at the Navy Yard, he made a wooden mold, put it in a vacuum chamber, sucked the air bubbles out and made up some fiberglass fenders. So his name was Bob Royal. So he put Royal delivery and fast delivery and all that. And uh, he made that, but he, he, uh, he did that on government time. This one here is a, this one here is a, a little 45. This one's a, a 30, okay, DL. Now, they started these in 29, but 29, there's a 29 over there and we'll go over that one. But 29 was the first year for this series of bikes. And at 29, 30, and 31 were called a three-cylinder Harley. Because if you take a look at this thing, the generator wasn't horizontal, it was vertical, okay? So it looked like a third cylinder. Mm. But this one here, I rode this around for a little bit, but it's a shaky ride because it's three-quarter wore out. So everything, you got to find a happy spot. You got to find it where it meshes up. And when you go to stop it, you got to look way down the road <laughs> and think about it, you know, because it don't stop very good at all, okay? So that's what that is. This one was a rare bike, and it was restored very nice early on. So we're lucky to get a hold of this. This is in 1933, so it's a low production year, 45 cubic inch. And the guy did a really good job of putting it back uh, in like a shiny jelly bean. This one here... This is the real thing. This is everybody's dream, okay? This is a 1936 VL, all right? All right, Flathead 74. I worked uh, I worked for Lou Baldwin on Federal Street in Camden for one year. Uh, what it was was the Harley shop, well, Harley Davidson factory wanted $20,000 for a franchise. Louie didn't have 20,000, he had 10,000. So they let him have a franchise anyhow. So coming on the first year, he went to the bank and said, I want to borrow some money for the winter because blah, blah, blah. They said, we ain't gonna lend you no money until you've been in business a couple of years. So he ended up going out of business because of that. He couldn't get a loan. And, but in the meantime, the jump man brings this here 36 bike in, right? And it had no headlight, no horn, rusty and looking yucky, but it had a New Jersey title brown but everybody in the neighborhood must have signed it because the title was all messed up and he had a little indian motor a little twin indian motor and uh, louis gave him 15 bucks for the motor and and the vl right Oof. okay so the motor disappeared quick so i guess louis got his money back and he wanted 75 dollars for this thing so there it is mm. a vl rusty with a title 75 bucks we well, couldn't sell it well about three weeks later a month one day he drives his pickup in and this rusty old handlebar went down the, down the side of the pickup. He says, Nick, give me 15 bucks and get that piece of crap out of here tonight. It's going, Louie. Okay. <laughs> so it's going, right? So for 15 bucks in America from the Harley dealer, you could buy a motorcycle that didn't run, but it had a title. Okay. 
So I painted it one winter. We gave it to my pop, had seven kids. He had seven kids, but he broke his arm on a little Indian, hit a 31 Chevy or something, and he had a steel plate in his arm. So he had seven kids, so mom was watching him, boy. He wasn't gonna get in the motorcycle thing again too fast. Mm. Okay, so bottom line is we gave him the bike, and every year we did something on it. My brother Frankie rebuilt the motor, I painted it. We went down to Carson a little one time in the winter in, in Lynchburg, Virginia. And in that point in time, you could buy the headlight, the dash, all that stuff from the old Harley dealers, because they still had it laying around. And they were willing to sell it to you, they didn't care. So we bought the stuff. So we finally got it running. Okay, we got it running, right? And Pop's on it.